Hey Raindrops, now before we get into this video, I wanna to talk to you about joining my community. Yes, my YouTube community of subscribers. So make sure you like and subscribe to this channel. It helps build the channel and build our community. I love it when you guys comment and post. So remember, make sure to like and subscribe to this channel. All right, Chris Fletcher, how you doing today, bro? Man, I'm good, Dust. I see we're trying to get this uh, uh, computer thing together, you know what I mean? Listen, and we got it together, because one thing we're going to do, and one thing that I know the Fletcher family is going to do is handle our business. Oh, okay? we're going to do that, baby. We're, we're going to do that. On, we're going to stand on. We're going to do all that. That's right. Now, now, Chris, just as far as a little background information, how long have you and Nell been married again? Um, In a couple of weeks, July the 27th, it'll be 30 years. 30 years so that's married, a married, first yeah. of all happy anniversary uh mm -hmm. coming up that's an incredible accomplishment and what a, 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 a what a steadfast family dynamic to show and share with the world right so thank you for sharing that with us what made you decide that it was time to kind of move your family to the front of the display when it comes to love and marriage Huntsville? because we've seen you all on the show before but this season right. We see you and your beautiful wife in the main cast opening credits, and we've gotten to know your dynamic family. Uh, what made you guys think that it was time now to share that with the audience? Um, that's a that's a great question. Um, <laughs> I guess coming on, like you said, I've I've been on the show for you know three four years or what have you, you know, in and out as a friend. Mm -hmm. Uh, as a real estate broker, of course. And, um, you know, it was very intriguing for me, um, you know, just to be, you know, in front of that camera. Um, and then, you know, some things happened. I really wanted the wife to come when I did, you know, to kind of tag in whether she's sitting in the background or whatever. But, you know, of course, she was going through some things, you know, uh, dealing with her mom and things like that. And, you know, just was not up to par. She just, just wasn't ready. And once she did, you know, about a year or so ago and decided to come on, um, everything just seemed like magic. You know what I mean? It's like it was just it was just like fit. Um, and I will tell you, and I don't I don't know if she said this to you or not, but there's been times other friends uh, of the family or just friends of the kids at the time um, in Atlanta, other places. The, the dynamic of our family when people are around is like, man, y'all need y'all need to be y'all need y'all show y'all <laughs> like y'all are funny as hell y'all you I mean y'all just do things so uh, charismatically that you know it just relates and you know and a, and a lot of people do and so you know um, if you want the authenticity of us and the family. You definitely will get it, you know what I mean. And it's like we can, we can, we can only do so much as the, you know, the mother and the father of the family. Our children are not children. Yeah. And I don't think any other show that I can think of, reality show, all their children are smaller. They mm -hmm. don't possess that dynamic of having grown children. I mean, our oldest 33, our youngest is 27. We yeah. Have, we have grandchildren and they have their own lives. So, you know, what what better way to uh, continue that of uh, showing of the Fletcher family without showing the grown ass children? Because yeah. they have their own thing as well. I think you make a great point about the um, the originality of kind of what you guys are presenting to the landscape of reality TV. Um, we've seen the model of a blended family before, but right. most often, if not always, the children are much, much younger. And so I think it's refreshing to see that stage of a blended family. You all have adult children who obviously are locked in siblings. We saw um, in this week's episode, Nell, your beautiful wife, she was talking to your oldest daughter and she told her, you know, I may not be your bio mom, but I love you just like you were my own. Right. What is the state of the relationship amongst the four children today? Is everybody on the same page right now and kind of getting along, Chris? Or how are the, the kids doing? Um, I mean, if you're if you're talking about Kayla, mm -hmm. Chris Jr., 
land. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and of course, Kiki, our um, you know niece daughter. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. All all of them are. Hell, I think they were all just together. I don't know if you watching on Instagram, but I think they were together somewhere eating. <laughs> and, uh, made a little slight comment, um, you know, on on that had a little caption that was pretty funny, uh, <laughs> saying something about spending some more of mom and dad's money or something like that. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, they blend, man. They 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 get along. You know, there's no yeah. uh, no no real fighting or anything like that. Yeah, we love to see that, and I think it's of note you know what i mean to to speak to the harmony that exists among them because they are fully grown adults with their own lives and still being able to find that camaraderie and that friendship as siblings i think is exemplary and it speaks to like the parenting job that has taken place um on behalf of you and your wife Nell. uh we saw this week this was a big week for you all on the show and we really got a, a, a deeper look into kind of the minutia of your family and, and the, the family dynamic amongst you and your wife, Nell, and your parenting styles. Um, but pulling back to to the initial, um, the thought or idea of, of experiencing therapy, right, as a family and as individuals, we saw some apprehension from your wife, Nell, in her participation in therapy. Um, she expressed uh very clearly that she did not think it was necessary for her behalf. What do you think that was rooted in, Chris? Was it rooted in, because oftentimes, you know, um, I'm from Michigan. Uh, I come from a family of uh, several, I have several siblings. My mom and dad have been married since, uh, they've been married for 53 years. Oh, man. Um, so yeah. it, it is, I come from that sort of foundational black family. Mm -hmm. And, um, I understand my parents are in a, uh, they're deeply in an organized religion and it's contributed to kind of their apprehension to uh, participate in that sort of work. Uh, what do you, was it rooted somewhere in there that are you and Neil a part of like a church organization? And do you think that may have contributed to her hesitance to, to kind of participate in the therapy or what do you think that was coming from? Um, no, we do belong to a church here called the rock, the rock. Okay. Company. And but it, it's it's not it's not a religious um, uh, apprehension or what have you for her. Okay. I don't think um, I really think it just comes from her upbringing of, you know, just that toughness. Mm -hmm. And we both come from the project. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and she just has that toughness about her that strong that, you know, and of course, I don't know, you know, she's only about five foot. Uh, but <laughs> that, that that thing about her that's you know now it's you know I'm mom I'm I'm the one you know I stand beside my king but y'all got to come through me mm -hmm. and you don't get through me you know necessarily uh, without some some tough tough love and I think and I think that's that's kind of what it is you know when you grow up and you see or you witness other families or you see other things of, you know, I don't, I don't want to say nowadays, but you don't get the same respect from the younger uh, generation today that we, that we got or we gave back when we were children or teenagers, you know, no matter who walked in the room, it mm -hmm. was yes, sir, yes, ma'am. What mm -hmm. happened? You know, if you if you do something at school and you get a paddling or whatever, because they don't do that no more. But no. if you get paddling, you might as well get ready because when you come home, you're gonna get your ass tore up again. Yeah, again. yeah. You know what I mean? And you just knew not to do that anymore. And I think it's 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 so much of of you know of that and just the way this generation lives today. She's just she just she's not having it. You know what yeah. I mean? And she feels that no, I don't I don't need no therapy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm just, I'm standing up for my family and for what I think and feel that is right and know that it's right. And these fucking kids are gonna do like I said, yeah. or you know, what I mean. Um, you know, and I'm not backing down. And I just feel like she has that toughness and it's like, you know, I don't I don't need therapy. I just need everybody to leave me the hell alone. And make sure you do your thing as a young adult, and then I wouldn't have to be this way. Yeah, 
Um, I think that uh, um, in this week's episode, when we saw you guys in a um, conversation with Dr. Francis, right, which I thought he did an amazing job moderating that discussion amongst you all um, and managing kind of the feelings and emotions of everybody that was present. And I was most impressed by the emotional intelligence that your children showed in that conversation, Um, the way that even your son Lance was explaining himself to his mom and saying, you know, hey, he was really being clear about where the breakdown occurred when he was expressing himself to his mom and she wasn't necessarily receiving it um, at face level and face value. Do you agree with what your son Lance said in that conversation when he said that? Most often when he is um, in communication with his mom, she's listening with the intention of offering a rebuttal as opposed to really hearing him out. Do you see that that is something that may be kind of blocking the communication between Nell and the children and maybe even Nell and you at times? Um, yeah, I, I, I do. I mean, I, right. I, I somewhat do agree with what he's saying. Um, and we've had that talk since then. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it it's... It was there. Mm-hmm. The, blockage, the blockage was there uh, because, again, she just wanted, you know, hear what I'm saying, do what mm-hmm. I say. You know what I mean? Uh, but we, we've we've talked about it since then, and I think we have some rec- rectification in That's reference right. to it. And, um, you know, I think we're doing better now. Yeah. So, but at that time, yes, I, I, I do agree. Yeah. A lot of blockage. I also noticed that um, like a recurring theme in, in when we, we spoke with Nell or when Nell was speaking rather uh, during the episode about what she was experiencing frustration connected to in the family structure. Um, several times she mentioned financial um, transactions that may have taken place that were a source of stress. And she's mentioned it several times. This isn't the first time that we heard that from Nell either. So what are we talking about here because there is a there's a conversation that's being had online where helping your kids is something that is almost obligatory from the parental perspective and so what is it that is so burdensome I guess so what kind of money are we talking about here Chris is it is it is it normal you know like parent child I need a thousand dollars here you know five hundred dollars here something like that are we talking about amounts of money that are really cause for concern here? No, I mean, uh, <laughs> well, for, for, for me, you know, you go anywhere past a hundred dollars for me, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's like, hell no, you know, that's, 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 you know, we're doing the most, you know, okay. but yeah, we're talking about, you know, $5,000 here. Okay. $5,000 there, $13,000 there. Okay. Twenty six hundred dollars here. Seventy five hundred dollars there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, yeah. and and that's not you know about getting into attorney fees and all that. You know, we're, yeah. going, we're going up, going yeah. up, 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 up. So it can put, uh, you know, it can it can it can put that burden on you. No matter you know, well, I won't say no matter how much money you have, but no matter how much money you have when you're just putting it out for mm-hmm. as we feel unnecessarily. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're grown. We brought you all up in the church. You know, you you have cores, you have values, mm-hmm. respect, all those things, education. Why the hell are you doing this? You know what I mean? Why, 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 why are you getting arrested? Why you can't pay your rent? Why you can't pay for this? Why why are you not able to do you, know, you you have it or you've had it? You have the means to acquire it. You have the job. Yeah. It's so it's adding up. And, oh. and you feel like there is opportunity there for your children to kind of assume that responsibility of adulthood. Right. And there are times where they are electing not to do so. Exactly. Okay. Well that would that would make sense. You know, I um I think anybody would feel um would would feel a, a cause for concern if something mm-hmm. was incessant in nature and continued to happen. Um and one thing that Nell expressed a little bit of concern with in the episode was she said there was a difference in perception right, right amongst the children when it came to the two of you all. Um 
I thought it was great how you specifically you, Chris, maintained a, a uniformity amongst you and Nell, you know, when, during that conversation mm -hmm. and you didn't really play into that. Why do you think that Nell feels that you are kind of the good cop and she's the bad cop when it comes to the, the children's perception of the two of you? Um, probably goes back to what Lance stated. Okay. You know, that episode, you listen to rebuttal. You listen to respond. You don't listen to hear what we're feeling. And I do. Um, you know, I, I, I listen because I'm searching for in my own thoughts of why are you in this position? Why are you telling me this? Why is it this way? You know what I mean? As everyone says, there's three sides to a story, my side, your side, and the right side. Uh, so I try to put all three of those things in perspective before responding. Um, and, you know, I, I'm not the, I'm not the yelling type. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I'm not the, the, the fussy, fussy type, put it that way. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say what I mean, mean what I say. And hell, that's just it. You know, yeah. you're going to get it. Well, hell, you might not get it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and they just take that as, you know, face value as well. And it's like, well, no, dad said no. So hell, I ain't going to get it. You yeah. Know what I mean? Or dad, he heard me. We talked about it. We discussed it. He gave me his version of it. I see a different side. All right. I understand. You know, and go yeah. on. What are your thoughts about um, the benefits of therapy for your family unit? Do you think that the conversation you had with Dr. Francis was beneficial for you all? Um, yeah, I do. Okay. I think it was beneficial. I think it's always, it's always a uh, beneficial uh, situation when I can get everyone together and yeah. have any type of discussion, you know what I mean? Yeah. Then to have a professional uh, to stand by with their uh, expertise, you know, of the matter, because they're listening for at that moment because they don't know us. You don't know us. Yeah. You know what I mean? So to to be able to listen in that short period of time and uh, display some of the things that he did and that he noticed, you know, I, I, I felt it was great and I definitely felt it was beneficial. Yes. That's great. And I thought that was, again, something great to be seen a family with adult children, you yes. know, seeking that professional assistance to kind of managing the relationships amongst you all. Do you think that um, that solo therapy is, is something that would be good for you all? Or do you think that the focus should just be on group sessions like what we saw this week? Um, no, I, I honestly think everyone needs a solo. Yeah. Everyone needs a solo session because everyone deals with everything differently, directly or indirectly. Uh, and I feel like if we could get everyone with a solo session and then always come back to a group session as well and kind of uh, display what we have learned or grown within ourselves, matured or what have you from those sessions to bring back to the group, I think it'll make the family a much better dynamic. I agree. And I, I, I think that we've seen kind of that sort of uh, logic based reasoning on your behalf expressed several times with, throughout this, um, throughout our, our experiences getting to know you all on screen, especially this season. Um, and as you know, I did have a conversation with your amazing wife, Nell, um, a couple of weeks ago, just about this season. And, and during that conversation, um, we spoke briefly about um kind of the communication or the the engagement between her and your oldest daughter's mom and how that may or may not have contributed to some sort of um work that could be done there in there in that relationship right mm -hmm. i was most interested though in your perspective on that because i know that had to be something that was a lot to take on when you have to manage that because it seems like you would be the anchor to kind of like make sure that there's a bridge there. Talk to us a little bit today, Chris, about that, how you've been able to manage that and kind of blend that family together for 30 years now when it comes to your oldest daughter being integrated fully into your family that you have with Nell and managing the communication between her, the moms. Um. Well, at this time, there's no communication. Okay. <laughs> you know, uh, since our scene, you know, last year, you know, with with the whole family that a dinner scene that we had, uh, there, there, there's been no communication. Uh, okay. You know, since then, 
But if you're talking about previous, it's more of, you know, let's just be adults about it. Mm -hmm. Everyone has remarried. I mean, she remarried. I remarried. I think she's probably been married for 20 some odd years. Yeah. So, you know, what what would be the uh, what what's the reason? You know, yeah. I, I father my child, I child support, whatever, whatever was needed was given, you know. Um, so there was there was no animosity there. There was none of that. And, you know, the things that were said after last, you know, last year's dinner scene was just really mind blowing. Mm -hmm. because, you know, some of these things was like, wait a minute, what? Where, you know, where and why? Yeah. Um, I just, you know, didn't have any words for it because never heard it before. Yeah. And, and it's like, look, we are, we're all grown. You now the, the children are grown 30, 32, 33 years old. Why, why are we doing this? Yeah. Uh, and, you know, previous years, the communication was fine. I mean, they would, they would talk, you know, um, they weren't best friends. Mm -hmm. But of course, they would communicate cordially and what have you, uh, and we really didn't have any issues. So, what do you think it was about that scene last year that kind of interrupted that harmony that you all had created? Um, of course, you know this is a, this is a show, yeah. so there was a lot that was edited, um, you know, from that scene. But um, I'm not sure if there was an agenda, mm -hmm. you know, there. Uh, coming from my oldest daughter's side, uh, because we were fine. Mm -hmm. uh, we were fine. I had just spoken with her and her husband, and as a matter of fact, we had been up uh, to Nashville to see them. Mm -hmm. And you know, they were operating. They have a CB CBD store, and we were doing fine there. I kind of helped them out with that, you yeah. know, finance and things like that. So we thought everything was good. Now, mind you, Lexi has gone off a couple of times with that tantrum. Okay. So we've seen that a couple of times before. Um, but, you know, she also, as she stated, and I didn't know she's been going to therapy since she was 12. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. No one ever, she's never told me that, never heard that. Now, I know she had started going to therapy about two years ago. Okay. Not since she was 12 years old. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't know if, the, if that was working, helping or whatever, but something at that table triggered her to just go flip the whole thing around. And hell, as you saw, I was sitting there like, what the hell are y'all doing? Yeah. Well, why? What, what are we doing? You like, could tell it was real for sure. You could tell oh, it was that, a real oh, moment. Real. Yeah. There, was, there was nothing fake, stage scripted, none of that. Yeah. That real true. That was real true Fletcher shit. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it just happened. Um, and I was keeping my cool, you know, until I went outside. Mm -hmm. and then, you know, she stated the things that she stated about, you know, I'd never done nothing for her until she was an adult, until she was 28. And it's like, really? <laughs> yeah, you gonna, gonna say this shit to me on screen outside by myself, so no one else is around. You're just talking to me, you know. Uh, so I was, I was kind of thrown, and, and it did. It kind of kicked me off for a second there, and I was, you know, I was like, you know, y'all go on, go on. How are things today with Lexi, Chris? I haven't spoken to her. Okay. Uh, I tried to reach out around Christmas, sent the kids some Christmas things. They sent them back. Um, and that's it. From my understanding, from what I've heard, she's pregnant again. Okay. You know, to have another child and have not talked to her. So. Well, we're definitely sending you all good wishes and 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 hope for resolution and just oh, yeah. peace and harmony. That's one of the things we love about these shows is that we get to follow a story and and hopefully most often see a resolve. Of something well, that's, positive. That's yeah. one of the things that I've expressed, you know, even with the show, we we give authenticity, you know what I'm saying? We try to be authentic as we can, but when we have issues such as like what we have now, I would like to see a resolution. I don't tend to see it on most of these shows like this. Everybody wants the mess and the bullshit 
and see someone, you know, get into it, whatever, whatever. And they just talk about that and laugh and go on. No, I don't want that. Yeah. I, I love my daughter. Yeah. And that was my firstborn. Right. I love my daughter. And I right. pray for her every day. So, you know, I need to see her, you know, I need her back. Yes. You know, and, um, you know, so we can, we can continue to grow and live. Yeah. So, you know, I'm looking for that resolution. You know, Wonderful. I don't well, want to stay that way. That's right. And we definitely, as viewers, we want to see that resolution too. So again, like I said, just sending you all much love and many wishes for peace and harmony when it comes to kind of bridging that gap. Um, another recurring theme that we've seen here, and I really don't even want to spend too much time on this, but I do want to give you the opportunity to just have your say from your mm -hmm. mouth. Um, there's been a few allegations thrown around that your wife nailed at the beginning of what we now know to be a 30-year marriage, okay? So the fact that this is even being questioned is a little ridiculous to me. But there are now allegations being thrown around that your wife, Nell, was a quote-unquote side chick or there was some sort of overlap there when the start of your marriage. And for those who that is important to, is there anything that you want to offer to that just to clear that up and and and, and just give a final say to that? No, that was, that was, my wife was never a side chick. There was never anything overlapping uh, yeah. uh, like that. I was married young, you know, trying to do the right thing uh, because my first wife, she had gotten pregnant. I'm young, you mm -hmm. know, 18, 19 years old. And my thoughts and my concerns of, you know, growing up as an adult, you know, you got a baby on the way, you need to marry her, you need to take care of her, da da da. Yeah. Yeah. Got her pregnant and, and, you know, married her. Mm -hmm. Things didn't work out. I mean, we were married for a little over a year, maybe, and separated before that. Yeah. You know, I was in the military. Uh, so we had to have a legal separation. Um, that occurred. Um, and I think I may have met, Lin Linnell, my wife now, mm -hmm. probably a year after that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, later that year after the legal separation. And yeah, I'm, I had, I met her, you know what I'm saying? And I had talked to her coming in town, out of town or what have you. But my first wife, waiting for her to sign, you know, the divorce decree, the divorce papers, I'm sorry, um, you know, to do as such. That doesn't mean my whole life is on hold. I mean, hell, I can date. For sure. I'm legally separated. And I was. Um, and, you know, and then my wife and I didn't get married until a year and a half later. Right. Two years later, after I was divorced. Right. Um, so, you know, where that's coming from, being a side chicken up, my, uh, our first child, Chris Jr., he and Lexi are four years apart. Yeah. Where where's the you know she was not pregnant she was not any of that. Um. So no, my wife was never no no damn side chick. Yeah. I just think that's just social media trying to portray things or make things look a certain way. And no, nah, we're not we're not having that. How did you feel? Because uh, again, when we as viewers were introduced to you and your wife Nell. Um, it was in the capacity of what looked like a, a, a mentor kind of relationship, mentorship, big brother, big sister, little brother, little sister relationship as couples uh, between you and, and your wife, Nell, and at the time, Martell and Melody when they were married. Mm -hmm. In this season, we've seen Martell kind of make some uh, allude to or kind of make insinuations that your wife, Nell, was a quote unquote side chick or that that overlap did exist. How does that, how do you feel about that? And where do you think that is coming from, that intention to kind of add, fly, throw a little gas on the flame of those rumors by Martell? Um, I mean, I think that was just Martell being Martell, just being a little asshole at, at the mm -hmm. time of the situation, uh, hearing it on social media. And for me, just bring it in just for a storyline. Okay saying shit and he he knew and that's why you know i expressed to production you know no i need to face him and let him know dude don't play with me you know what i'm saying because you put this out there and this is what happens 
So the scene that we saw when you addressed that with Martel, you spearheaded that scene even taking place. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because I wanted to know, you know, you you making these comments like that. I want you to straighten this shit out. Yeah. You know, my my wife wasn't no damn side chick, but yeah, you know, stop playing with me. Was that sort of um was that sort of approach from Martel or, or that reaction per se? to to whatever he triggered him to make him, him kind of make those accusations was that a new side of martel for you all to see or had you seen that sort of behavior before be present um i don't i don't think it was a new side <laughs> i mean you know martel has been known to throw some throw some things out there before but it was new to us yeah okay? Wasn't ex wouldn't expect that to come from Martel from all the uh, mentoring talks, counseling, whatever that we have done with he he and Mel, and you, he knew he knew uh, the the strength of our relationship and how long we've been together and all those type things. So yeah, I, I just think that's just you know Martel just acting up for the moment. Okay, I I think that um. Again, because of the introduction that we got from the that that kind of defined the connection that you had with the Holtz at that time. Now, Melody Rogers and Martel Holt but at the time when they were a unit, you know, that's how we were introduced to you and Nell. And so to see uh, moments like when you all were on the trip and there was a disagreement between Martel and Nell um, and kind of the spirited nature of the conversation, right? The the heightened, the passionate nature of the conversation was a little off-putting for a lot of the viewers. How did you feel about like the way that Martel was was speaking in those kind of, you know, more passionate conversations between him and Nell? What was that like for you on the end, end of that, watch, watching the way that he was communicating with Nell? Well, uh, I think a lot of people, and I've said this before, We've spent so much time together. We've talked, you know, talked to uh, Mel and Martel on so many different occasions. Uh, that ain't the first time they've had this type of conversation. Um, okay. You know, because Martel generally, as everybody knows, just fucking hard headed. You know. Okay. <laughs> he he listens, but he doesn't activate. You know what I mean? He, he hear you, but maybe he ain't listening. Type thing. So. You know, um, they, they've had that type of conversation. Um, we look at them as brother, sister type because we spent, you know, so much time and, and spoken with them in, in depth on relationship and things of that nature. So I've seen that conversation. I've seen that type of camaraderie between the two that mm -hmm. go on. Again, I'm not the fussy, fussy type. You know what I'm saying? If I, yeah. if I, if I step in, then we probably got a problem. Yeah. We got a real problem if I step in. But to see them going back and forth, for me, it was just like a a, a passion of brother, sister, love. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She's passionate about what he's saying, and she damn sure going to be passionate about what she's saying. And it just, you know, she she's going to get loud anyway. He's getting loud. And it's like when you see it and you don't know of them, you just know what you see on television – then, yeah, you know, I got all the comments of how you let this man disrespect your wife and, you know, this, that, and the other. And it's, to me, it was just a brotherly love conversation. I mean, I always relate back to the um, uh, not coming to America, Harlem Nights. Uh, Vera and, uh, yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> and Eddie Murphy, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. They have that type relationship that they talk that shit to each other. Yeah. You know I mean? And and that's just the way I, I, I see it. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up, though, because I think it kind of sheds light on that for people who may not get the dynamic. Mm -hmm. There's an undercurrent of, right. of love and concern there that kind of, you know, that you understand because you're in it and that they right. understand because they're in it. Right. And that will always supersede whatever surface level kind of mm -hmm. things we see going back and forth. I think that really clears that up. Yeah, and they, people need to keep that in mind. I would never let nobody disrespect my wife. Come on, yeah, now. yeah. yeah. Hey, I ain't, I'm not that damn soft. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, no, that's been pretty clear. And I think that the viewers actually really connected with that scene where you did address that situation with Martel, you know, immediately. Normally, those sort of feelings are something that we see play out over maybe a whole season or multiple seasons is held on to and kind of allowed to grow bigger and bigger. But I think that fans, per what I've seen um, in, in the conversation and the commentary from fans, I think they really connected with the way that you quickly, you know what I mean? Kind of like stepped in and, and, and there was a one-on-one -on -one that addressed those feelings or whatever. And I think that was great. Um, a little bit more about, well, not a little bit more, but one other part of your experience on the show that I think um, most people would have found challenging, right, Chris, is the way that um, past challenges um, in your marriage have been kind of highlighted and, and and resurfaced to be dissected and talked about once again. And obviously you and uh, your wife now have been brave enough to speak about past infidelities um, and things that y'all have gotten over and moved on. We're talking about, again, a 30 year marriage for your experience, though, as these things are being brought back up. What has that been like for you? Has it been something that you've had to revisit and maybe work through again in a positive way? Was it tough for you? What is that like when past infidelities are brought up to the surface again to be fodder for conversation? Um, I mean, it's tough. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. Um. I was younger, of course, you know, yeah. at the time, uh, which doesn't make it an excuse. I'm just saying I was, yeah. I was so maybe some uh, more uh, immaturity perhaps there. Uh, and then I'll say, uh, as I always say, most of the time when there's a marriage or a relationship and the woman is angry, mad or what have you, outside of the children, but most of the time, I give it 95, 98% of the time. It's usually something the man did wrong. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and a lot of men won't admit that. Um, but generally it's something that you didn't do, did do. Right. Done, you know what I mean? And you got her where she's at. And which that puts a woman in a very uh, difficult situation. For sure. Um now I'm glad that at that time we still had some years in. Yeah. You know, we had a good probably 10 years, 15 years in. Yeah. And we were we were able to to get through it. You know what I mean? It was my mistake. It was my stupidity. It was my selfishness. It was my, you know, it was just it was my fault. Okay. Of what happened and how it happened. Um no, no needing pointing the blame anywhere else. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something that I was grown, I'm right, sane of mind, you know what I mean? Um, but when I hear it come up again, yeah, yeah it, 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 it bothers me, it bothers my wife because I know it moves her heart, her feelings, her thoughts, you know what I mean? And it, it, it's a trigger, I'm sure, for her, yeah, her feelings. So that that bothers me. Uh, I am so grateful and thankful to have a wife that understands and can get through those type situations, because a lot of people, a lot of females, I feel, would today's age and time would take that and be like, you know what? Yeah, yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm gonna go do such and such or yeah, you wouldn't write and and you said something to me last night. So, you know, today marriage is just they don't give a damn. As soon as something happens, they out. I can find me another one. You know what I'm saying? Or I don't like the way you said that to me. You know, and you just don't get a chance to to build that or strengthen that relationship like I feel like that we did or we have. Yeah. So yeah, it, it it bothers me and it bothers me because I know it affects her. Right. Um of course I'm affected as well because then now I got to hear all this shit again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I, I gotta explain myself to other people that I shouldn't even have to be explaining myself to. Right, right. Um, and so yeah, it's it's uh it's a thing, man, but 
we're, we're, we're grown, you know, we're still in love, you know, still doing the damn thing. I'll yeah. just, go, you know, kick off a new dance or some shit and get it out of my brain and, yeah. and just come back to the marriage. I think that's that that's great to hear. First of all, that you all have found a way to kind of manage that discomfort when that is mentioned, because it's got to it's got to suck to feel like somebody's holding something over your head, you know, and bringing it up again. But I love the fact that you all are focused on the the moving forward right. of it all. And I also think that accountability is a huge part of your success in in navigating that. Because when we discussed it even today, mind you, we're talking about your feelings connected to it. And you went straight into, listen, there's no one to blame for this situation but me. And you the accountability kind of filled up that space. So I, I am interested to hear your thoughts based on another conversation that we saw take place about accountability um, on this week's episode. And that was the conversation between Marceau. Scott and uh, Trisha, the new addition to the cast, her current husband, who's really her ex, uh, Marquez. They had a conversation about Marquez's frustrations with the the presence of Latricia's new partner, Ken, in the lives of his children. And Mar uh, uh, Marceau was very clear in his messaging to Marquez in that conversation that, listen, you have to be there. Um, and take up the space as a father to your children in order to kind of assume that positioning that you're speaking of that you resent Ken for having now. So I'm interested in your take on that because we do see, again, the 30 year mark of a successful blended family, right, um, where you all love all of your children in totality. There is no separation of, of step, half, none of that. It's just your children. Uh, and you both had to kind of learn how to to define the mechanics of a relationship like that. What are your thoughts on Marquez's feelings and what Marceau had to say to him in that conversation? Um, I feel there was some validity to what Marceau was saying. Yeah. Him or Marquez. Uh, because from my understanding, you, you had been married 13, 14 years or what have you. And you just decide Marquez just decide one day he wants to get up and leave and be gone for a year all the way in Atlanta or wherever he went. Yeah. With, according to Trish, no communication, you know, what the hell did you expect, bro? Right. You just left your wife that you've been with since you were a teenager, 14 year marriage, you had two children, and one day you just decided to leave? Yeah. You know, I mean, put the shoe on the other foot. Shit, what if she decided she wanted to leave? Right. You know, you kind of gave up all those rights. Yeah. You you really did. You Luckily, she didn't do more than what she did. Yeah, for sure. It, like, like legally, more than what she did. Um, I will say, kind of off a little bit, the subject, uh, at I don't know what's been taking so long with the divorce. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think that's an issue, but that's mm -hmm. with her and Ken, you know, they, they, they need to rectify. But as far as Marquez, I just think he was just immature and very selfish mm -hmm. at that, at that moment, because you didn't go to Atlanta or wherever he went. You didn't leave for that year and go be a damn monk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you didn't go and yeah. just say, you know, I'm just going to stop my life. I'm going to go live in this cave. And then after a year, I'll come back. You know, you, you you really, you don't get, bro, when you get, when you say I do and you have these children, ain't no turning back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no, well, you know what? I think I'm going to take this child and put him back up in there. I don't, we don't, we ain't ready to deal with that now. You can't do that. You can't yeah. just walk, you can't just walk away. So I think it's very childish, immature to do such a thing. Um, yes, he does state that Ken is a trigger for him, but I don't see where. I don't see why this man has been taking care of your wife and kids for a little over two years. Yeah. Like wholeheartedly, new house, you know, car, 
Yeah. Taking your kids to taking your kids to taking your kids to school. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, picking them up after school activities, all those type things. How the hell could he be a trigger to you, bro? Yeah. What you should be doing is shaking his hand and thanking him. And of course, if if your marriage is over, y'all need to go ahead and end that thing so that your children and your ex-wife can be happy if that's where their happiness is. Right. Uh, because you walked away from that, you know, and there's, right. there's really no coming back. And I think more so uh, it's all about the children. What you need to do is make sure your kids are happy as well, because what you and Trish had, I, I think is over. So now you need to concentrate on making sure your children to continue to mature and grow the way that they need to. Because I yeah. think one of the children are maybe nine or 10 years old. Right. Whole life ahead of them. Right. There for her to make sure she's getting what she needs from both of you all. Right. You and Ken and Trish. So, you know, I just think that was a very selfish and immature thing for Marquez to do. Uh, there's some validity to what Marceau was trying to tell the, the gentleman. Um, you know, uh, he just needs to continue to grow up. Yeah. Well, what I love most about um, the cast of Love and Marriage Huntsville is that, again, while there is a break in the the father um, and child relationship there between Marquez and his children with Trisha, we see shining examples of black fathers and black men who are pouring knowledge and pouring care into him, giving him advice, and also quite literally in Ken's case, stepping up and assuming the responsibility happily, eagerly, you know what I mean? And, 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 and with joy. And I think that's beautiful to see on television is that you, you know, these black fathers are standing in the gap and, and, and being there for one another and most importantly for those children. And that is why we're so happy that you and your family are part of the cast this season, Chris. Um, we just really want to say thank you, man, for sharing your life and being honest and transparent. Um, and also to your adult children for being a part of this cast as well. Um, I hope we get to see a little bit more from them. You mentioned that they are in their own relationships and they have their own stations in life. So hopefully they're down to show us that and we get to know the Fletcher family even more coming up soon, man. So Oh yeah, they're coming, brother. They're coming. You yeah. You know, everybody they get a chance to see more of them and their dynamics and what they have going on. And you know, we'll continue to grow with them, the growing pains and the and as well as the success. Yeah. So, you know, um the world will get a chance to see that as well. Well, we're certainly looking forward to it, Chris, man. Thank you for your time today, bro. Hey, um, is there anything I like to give the cast a chance because, as you know, from being on this show, you, you're on the camera for five seconds and here comes the comments. Right. right. Here comes the fans. I think that over the years, this show has developed a very loyal and connected fan base and they're right. passionate with what they have to say about the show. And sometimes that can kind of uh, make the, the experience of the cast a little difficult. So is there anything that you want to say or any way that you want to encourage the fans to experience the show moving forward? Um, no, I think we kind of, I think we kind of covered everything, man. Um, okay. One thing, you know, again, I'll say is they need to know I love, I love my daughter. Yes. So I'm looking for a resolution. I pray for her every day. And so I'm looking for that to return to her father. Yes. Uh, I have reached out. So, you know, it's two sides to it, not just her. Okay. Uh, and as far as the, you know, my wife, my lovely wife and the Martell thing, you know, keep in mind. Ain't nobody disrespecting my wife. You know what I mean? We, mm -hmm. we have a relationship. Nothing is scripted. This is true, real life, authentic, uh, you know, work that we're doing. Um, and no, listen to me closely, America. No, we're not picking sides. We are neutral. We are neutral. And that's in everyone. It doesn't matter if it's male, Martell, Leticia and Marceau, Kimmy, Maurice, doesn't matter. We There's no such thing as picking sides if you're in the position that we're in. And mm -hmm. that's to continue to help us as well as them 
to grow, to love one another, you know, success, progression with the family, your jobs, all that. Um, and that's that's what we're all about. It's all about the Fletcher's experience. So yes. Well, we can't wait to see more of that. Thank you so much for your time today, Chris. And hey, you have a great afternoon, man. Hey, Gus, you do the same thing, bro. Big ups right. to you. No problem.